I get to the bottom of all those Apple MagSafe charging rumors. How fast does this guy actually charge your iPhone? Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and I love that you are with me today as I look to dispel any MagSafe charging rumors. I'm going to show you exactly how long it takes to charge your phone using various cables, everything down to a USB-A 5 watt charger to a 20 watt USB-C power brick to Apple's latest MagSafe cable. I have a lot of data to go over, so I'm gonna break this video into three different sections and you can jump through them using the chapter markers down below. The first chapter, I'm gonna go through the methodology, what I'm using. I really wanna be very explicit in what I am testing and how I am testing so you can trust all the data that I've collected. In the second part, I'm gonna go through the data, show you what I saw, and then in the third part, it's gonna be more of an analysis and seeing why there's so many variations in this different charging methodology. So let's go ahead and just dive into this thing because we got a lot to talk about. So what am I testing here? What am I looking to gain? and how am I going to measure it? Well, I wanted to test how fast Apple's MagSafe charger was. There was other data put out that some people claimed was showing Apple's MagSafe charger was very slow, sometimes even slower than a five watt wireless charger, which to me seemed absurd. So I wanted to put that to the test and I ended up collecting a lot of data on four distinct charging methods for your iPhone. So here's what I used and how I tested. So let's walk through the four types of charging that I'm going to examine in this video. First up is USB-A. I have Apple's five watt USB-A power brick and I used Apple's own USB-A to lightning cable. After that, I set up to a 7.5 wireless charger. iPhones can only charge at 7.5 watts maximum on a wireless charger. I have reportedly one of the best ones in the industry to test, which is the Moshi Auto Q. This is the one that I used and can charge up to 7.5 watts on an iPhone. After that, I tested Apple's MagSafe cable. So again, the first party MagSafe cable from Apple, and I'm combining it with Apple's own 20 watt USB-C power adapter. Finally, I have Apple's 20 watt USB-C power adapter combined with a 20 watt Apple USB-C to lightning cable. You'll notice on all the cables and power adapters, I'm using Apple's own devices. I wanna keep this as ideal and even across the board as possible. So Apple's charger, Apple's charger, Apple's cable, Apple's cable. The only one that's not Apple is of course the Moshi charger because Apple doesn't really make a wireless charging pad. So we do have to use a third party for that. But other than that, everything is stock Apple. Now specifically, I'm also not using any third party MagSafe chargers. There are a few different options that you may see out there. Ones like this one from Native Union. This is a great one, but even though it looks like MagSafe, it's actually just a 7.5 watt wireless charger with magnets connected to it. I'm not gonna be using this in my testing. I'm also not using Belkin's MagSafe chargers. These are some of the only MagSafe chargers out there that are certified through Apple and using actual MagSafe components. In theory, this should charge at the same 15 watt maximum as Apple's own MagSafe cable. But trying to keep everything as stock as possible, I'm not using this, we're just using Apple's cable. Using each of these charging methods, I connected an iPhone 12 Pro. This is one of the most common iPhones out there and this was originally what MagSafe launched with. So this is what I'm testing with across the board. I use the same exact phone. I would run the battery all the way down to zero where the phone wouldn't even turn on, just it was that dead. And then I would connect it to each of these chargers, then log what charging percentage it was at every five minutes. And I did so until the phone was completely charged. So I have data on five minute increments on all four of these charging methods using this phone from zero to 100. That's a lot of data to look at. So I did this test, I carried it out with all these charging methods, just using the stock charging cables. And then I went back looking at MagSafe specifically and I used the Sateki USB-C power adapter to give me an idea on how much power was being drawn while charging via MagSafe. So we'll come back to this in just a little bit to analyze how much power MagSafe is actually utilizing. Let's go ahead and look at some of this data. 
So here we have all of our charging methods on the left hand side and we have our number of minutes there at the top. At the five minute mark, the 7.5 watt Qi charger still hadn't even managed to turn the phone on yet. It wasn't enough power to even turn on. The five watt USB-A managed 3% battery while the 20 watt cable got up to 7%. And then MagSafe, it was at 2%. So at this point, the five watt USB-A cable charged faster than MagSafe did. But as we explore further, that five watt cable starts to slow down and the Qi charging is pretty abysmal. At the 10 minute mark, MagSafe had jumped up to 8% while the 20 watt cable was unsurprisingly at 17%. The five watt cable was at six and the 7.5 watt charger was at 3%. Let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit. If we get to the 30 minute mark, 30 minutes of charging our phone, MagSafe was at 31%, followed by the 20 watt USB-C cable, which was at 52%. Apple says using a USB-C power brick and a lightning to USB-C cable, you can fast charge your iPhone to get a 30% charge or a 50% charge in only 30 minutes. And based on this data, that is absolutely accurate. We got 52% in only 30 minutes. The USB-A cable was pitiful at only 17% charge and our 7.5 watt charger was a little bit better at 20 watts. What I found interesting here was that the MagSafe cable was about double what we saw from the five watt charger. So even though MagSafe knew up to 15 watts, it was about double what our five watt charging speed was. Unsurprisingly, the 20 watt lightning cable was the first to reach full power, taking 115 minutes. But as you'll notice when you look at the data, it became really stagnant that last little bit. It got really close to the end, you know, 95, 96%. And then it just stuck there for five minutes at a time, going up one or two percentage points until it got to full 100% at 115 minutes. So you get nearly there before that. And then it was very slow trickle charging that last little bit. Now MagSafe, it took a little bit longer. So instead of 115 minutes, it took 130 minutes. In my testing, it only took 15 more minutes for MagSafe to charge your iPhone than the lightning cable. I think that is pretty darn good. If we keep going, the five watt cable, it took a crazy 195 minutes 195 minutes to reach a full charge. The 7.5 watt charger was a little bit faster at 160 minutes. So still very slow. Looking at the graph, let's summarize some takeaways here. First, in the short term, you're never gonna beat that 20 watt USB-C lightning cable. The initial part of that goes up very fast. You are getting the best bang for your buck with charging using the 20 watt USB-C lightning cable. For short term, that is what you want to do. Even the MagSafe, you're still looking at maybe 28 or so percent coming off that 30 minute mark. It's just not cutting it, let alone what you're seeing with the Qi charging and with the USB-A cable. Very slow, awful options. As we get further into this though, you see how that 20 watt lightning cable slows down. It tapers off. That last little bit is very slow. Once you get to that 75 minute mark, an hour and 15 minutes, everything starts to go very flat across the board and we're not seeing nearly as much benefit to using that cable. So if you're looking to fully charge your device, MagSafe is not far behind a 20 watt USB-C lightning cable. Qi charging does eke out the five watt USB-A cable, which is also unsurprising. It starts off slower, but does get a little bit quicker after about 20 minutes. It takes a five watt USB-A charger more than an hour to fully charge an iPhone 12 Pro compared to a USB-C 20 watt lightning cable. That is absurd. So is MagSafe actually delivering 15 watts of wireless power to your phone? Well, yes and no. See, Apple says MagSafe can deliver up to 15 watts of power, but it's not promising 15 watts of wireless power the whole time. Rather, it's actually saying that it can go up to 15 when appropriate. When I connected it in and measured with the power meter, it initially jumped up to about 15 watts of power, but quickly pulled back after that. Anytime you're charging, whether wirelessly or wired, there are a lot of variables to take into consideration. With Qi charging, you have to worry about alignment. You need to make sure that the coil on the charger and the coil on your phone are almost exactly on top of one another to get the best possible speeds. Any differential from that, and you're gonna have less power transmitted 
wirelessly. MagSafe takes out some of that as an issue because of the magnets will always align your phone and the charger as they should be. And MagSafe is more efficient at transferring wireless power than she is. So more of that power is making it to your phone. But things like heat also come into play, which is why we see the power drop down. So it's not always delivering 15 watts of wireless power. Soon after that I connected it, it dropped down to about 11 and a half to 12 watts of wireless power. We were seeing about 8.8 .8 or so volts to 1.3 or so amps, which equates to about 11 to 12 watts of power. And it stayed static about there for the rest of the time. So we're getting basically about 12 to 11 watts of power delivered to our phone. So you have your cable, the MagSafe, even though it can stay up to 15, it would only go there occasionally. It was pulling back to more about 12 watts, 11 watts, which I'm perfectly fine with because it's still faster than any wireless charging that you have and it's still faster than USB-A. You were never gonna be a 20 watt USB-C lightning cable, but there's other benefits of MagSafe. So big picture time, what does all of this mean? Well, it means MagSafe is doing pretty much exactly what it's promised to do. None of these results were surprising. What were surprising was some of the other results that were posted online that did not seem to align with real world usage. These are as sterile results as we can collect using a standardized group of chargers and cables from a single manufacturer and a single phone and measuring at very small five minute intervals to see how the charging stacked up and how long it took for each of these to go from zero to 100. Based on these results, MagSafe does great and it shows up exactly in this chart where we expected it to. The lightning cable with 20 watts of power is by far the fastest, unsurprisingly. The MagSafe cable is right behind that. Then you have your 7.5 watt wireless charger followed by the lowly 5 watt USB-A charger. Everything makes sense with the data that I collected and we collected multiple times just to be sure all these results were accurate. You should feel safe using MagSafe that it's gonna charge faster than other methods, but you'll never be able to be an actual 20 watt USB-C lightning cable. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments or better yet on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Do you use MagSafe charging? Are these results fast enough for you? Let me know if you wanna grab another wireless charger, another Qi charger, another MagSafe charger. I've got links for some down below in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.